You know, when you live in a condo, it's really nice that somebody else does your yard for you. Like, I never have to mow, I never have to weed whack, I don't have to shovel my driveway when it snows. It's great. The only problem is when you want to film, this happens. So if there's lots of noise in the background of my video, I apologize. Somebody's making the outside look beautiful right now. Don't really have time to wait for them to finish because it could be all day. Also, how are we feeling about the freckles? I don't know what possessed me. I just was like, you know what? I just want to do this today. I was really feeling it. So we just went very like super artistic. I'm wearing glitter, fake freckles. We're just going ham with the makeup today. So hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about my July favorites and fails. I have not done a favorites video since April because I took like a two month YouTube hiatus. So I feel like I have so much that I want to talk about. I think I'm going to try to like rein things in because I have shared a lot of products recently in videos and tutorials, so obviously I have been loving a lot of those things, so I'm going to try to show you some new stuff that I've been really into, but also some updates from like the haul posts that I did as to which of those things are my current obsessions. So if you're curious to see what I've been loving and not loving so much from the last month, keep on watching. So why don't we start out with skincare. Skincare is probably my favorite thing within the beauty world. Like I love makeup, don't get me wrong, but skincare is what you need to create your perfect base. Your face is your canvas, you need to take care of it. So I'm all about that skincare life. So I've tried some new wipes out lately. These are by the brand Shea Moisture, and I love their hair products, and I haven't used as much of their skincare, so this was something more new to me. This is their African Black Soap Clarifying Facial Wipes with Tea Tree Oil and Calendula. It's for oily, blemish-prone skin, which is what I have, and these are so good. First of all, they smell incredible. Like. I don't think, I can kind of smell the, the package. It's almost like it reminds me of fruity bubble gum. It's hard to explain. If you've ever used or smelled the African black soap, it just, it's so good. So half of me wanting to use these is just because they smell incredible. Um, but they are not very irritating to my skin. I feel like they do a really good job of taking off makeup. This is something that I use like if I want to sort of pre-remove makeup. Um, or if I'm going to be changing my makeup in the day and I don't want to like have to do the whole skincare all over again, I will use these and they have been very, very good. Also, if I remember correctly, I think I saw them at Walmart and they were about four or five dollars. So they're also very affordable as well. Now for cleansers, I've been sent some really amazing skincare lately. So both of these brands um, did send me these products in PR and I've been testing them out and I really genuinely like them a lot. Um, they both sent me a bunch of different things, but these were my favorite of everything that I tried and I really enjoy using them together. So the first is by a brand called Botanic Farm. This is like an Asian skincare brand and I believe they are now being carried at Ulta, which is awesome. So I would definitely check that out if you're curious about their products. Um, but they sent me this grain ferment cleansing sherbet for face. So this was just a little sample and basically it's like a balm. It almost it, it, it says it's cleansing sherbet, and I kind of get why they call it that. It's got a really interesting texture, but it's basically like a cleansing oil in a solid form. It almost reminds me of like whipped coconut oil. Um, but basically, this is amazing for breaking down makeup. So usually this is step one of a double cleanse. So I will put this on my hands and I'll rub it into my face dry and it just breaks down all of my makeup. When you rinse <laughs> your face off, like I can just see all of the foundation in the sink like coming off my face. It's crazy. So really been enjoying that. And then to second cleanse my skin, I've been using the Skin Fix Foaming Clay Cleanser. Oh my god. Now Skin Fix did send me two cleansers, but this is my favorite. It is so good. It is kind of weird because it's a clay cleanser, so it's thick and clay-like, but it foams up very nicely and it's just like really rich, but it's not drying. There's no sulfates. I think it's like 99 or 98% natural ingredients. Really good for your skin and very reasonably priced. Like this feels, it reminds me a lot of my Glam Glow Mud Cleanser, which is like a $30 cleanser, and this is way more affordable than that and is just as good. So if you are looking for a really great nighttime cleanser to get your skin feeling really clean and detoxified, but it doesn't leave it like tight or dry, like it just leaves your skin feeling so nice, you need this in your life. Now, this is sort of like a 
skincare slash makeup product, so I guess this will be a good segue into makeup. Um, this is the IT Cosmetics Anti-Aging Armor um, Super Smart Skin Perfecting Beauty Fluid. That is a long name. So basically what this is, is it's a sunscreen serum, but it is tinted and it does leave your skin with a little bit of a matte finish. So you can wear this all by itself in lieu of like a tinted moisturizer or something like that if you're doing a very minimal makeup day. Or you could wear it as like a primer underneath your makeup to just give your skin that added boost of sun protection. It uses all mineral sunscreens, which I am a big fan of. I basically can like completely stay away from chemical sunscreens whenever I can. I feel like they make my skin irritated on my face, which is a little bit sensitive in addition to being oily and blemish prone. So I have really been enjoying using this a lot and it is a little expensive. I think it's around $38. So you only get one fluid ounce, but a little bit goes a long way and the sun protection is great. So if you're looking for something lightweight that's not gonna make you greasy and that's gonna give you that sun protection, Check this one out. So, makeup. Uh, I have quite a few makeup favorites to show you guys. Let's just, let's just get this one out of the way. So I got this palette in the recent relaunch, so I haven't had it that long, but I've used it legit almost every single day since I got it. This palette is so good. It is beautifully colorful. It has amazing mattes, amazing metallics. It's just so much fun. It's what I use to create this eye look Today, I've used it in several of my videos um, in you know, the eye makeup that I'm wearing and on Instagram lately. I've just been having so much fun playing with this palette. Like today, I used this red shade, this yellow shade. I used some of these browns down here. I have um, this, this color here on my lid. These are really great highlighting shades. It's just, it's so fun. And yes, this palette was $38, which for Morphe is very expensive, but you get a lot of options like this is a massive palette so I feel like compared to other palettes like Urban Decay, Too Faced, Tarte even like those palettes you get way less product way less shade variety and they're more expensive and the quality of these shadows is, is beyond drugstore like it's very very good so I'm really glad that I got this I've heard that they are going to be restocking again in August potentially. So if you were unable to get your hands on this in the first two rounds of launches, I would definitely recommend if you love eyeshadow and you love experimenting with color, check this out. So I've kind of come across a magical combination for my face makeup within the last like week or so. I've been trying out a bunch of different products and I finally have found a combination that is like, oh, it is perfect because my skin in the summertime, which it is right now, it gets very oily, especially in the T-zone. And most foundations that I can wear in the winter will just go so greasy on me by the end of the day. And I've been trying like different setting powders, different setting sprays to see what will help. And this has been the magical combination. I prime my skin with the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. This is this has to be my favorite primer. I, I just have to say it. This is so good, but it is so expensive and I'm like more than halfway done with this bottle Which makes me want to cry a little bit inside because it's so expensive. It's like $65 for one bottle and it, it, it definitely makes me a little sad to think about needing to repurchase this but Maybe I can make it last a while and I won't have to worry about it, but I basically put this on This makes your makeup glide on so easily and I feel like it makes your pores vanish. It's crazy. So Love this for priming. Then I will layer on top my Tarte Clay Stick Foundation. Now this is something that like I was getting oily with, but I realized once I use this primer and the powder that I'm gonna tell you about, I don't get shiny. And you don't really need to use a lot of this. It blends out really well. Um, I have been having some more success using a sponge with this or my fingers. I don't really like to blend this in with a brush, but it does give really nice coverage. It lasts well and it is while very, very creamy, not overly luminous. So I feel like even though my skin is oily, I can definitely still wear this, so winner. And then the final step is this Pixie by Petra Quick Quick Fix, yes, Quick Fix Translucent Powder. This is something they also very recently said to me, and every time I've used this, I've been so impressed by how matte and how poreless my skin looks. So this basically, it's really cool. It is a little puff, 
And the powder actually comes through the center here and it has a mirror on top, which I think is really handy. Um, you basically just have to, uh, when you first get it, unscrew the powder off the bottom and open the little stopper up inside so the powder can flow through. But you basically just pat it on to the areas that are shiny. It sets them down. You can throw this in your purse for touch-ups if you need to. Honestly, I haven't really even needed to touch up that much when I've been wearing this. Like, I went out last night. I was outside in the sun. I came home and my skin lo still looked really matte. So I've been very impressed by this product and I think the combination of these three things together is kind of expensive, I'm not going to lie. Like I know these three products together are well over $100, but they make my skin look fantastic. So can't really complain about that. So I've got another little like makeup cocktail to share with you guys that makes me feel super extra, but let me explain. All right, so L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise. This mascara is bomb. Everybody's been raving about it. I feel like I don't really need to go on and on. But what I've noticed that over time with this mascara, it does start to get clumpy. Like it does give you amazing volume to your lashes, but it can kind of start to make them stick together as it starts to dry out. But then I got this mascara from Influencer, and this is actually going to be sort of one of my fails for the month. This is the Givenchy um, Noir Interdit Mascara, and this is the one that has that like crazy wand that does this, that, you know. And I really didn't like this mascara on its own. I just didn't really feel like it did anything for my lashes. But what I realized is that the wand on this mascara has such like tons of tiny little spiky bristles. It does an amazing job of combing out your lashes. So what I'll do is put on the L'Oreal one first, really get the volume built up. Then I can go in with this and this just adds that extra separation. It makes my lashes look feathery and long. So together, it's basically amazing. I, I don't think that I would use this very much on its own. So really for me, I kind of feel like knowing that I can use them together, at least this won't go to waste for me. I wouldn't necessarily recommend you go out and buy both of these mascaras because this one's very expensive. The L'Oreal one is amazing, but I guess just as a thing to keep in mind, if you do have this mascara and you own another mascara that has um, more of those spiky type bristles that are really good at combing out the lashes, Try cocktailing your mascara. Sometimes magic can happen, so just putting that out there. Something else I want to put out there is by a brand that I feel like nobody talks about on Instagram slash YouTube. Like, I haven't heard anybody talk about this brand, and I've tried a few of their products. They're very good, and this especially has been bomb. It is Motives Cosmetics. Um, this is their eye base, which is basically like a little... Um, eye primer pot. I feel like I've never used the MAC paint pots, but I imagine that this must be kind of a similar deal. Um, I actually like to apply this on my eyes with a concealer brush and then kind of blend it in. And it does make your eyeshadows really pop. And it's the kind of primer that has a very silky texture. So you could set it down, but even if you didn't set it, like your eyeshadows glide on top of it really easily. It doesn't like cling. It's not sticky at all. So I've been really enjoying this. I think Motives may have a lot that is sort of like their hidden gems. Oh, I'm really curious to try more from the brand. If you have recommendations, definitely let me know. And then the last makeup product that I had to include this month is my Milani Strobe Light. Yes, yeah, Strobe Light um, Instant Glow Powder. This is in the shade Sun Glow. This highlighter is life. Oh my god, I'm obsessed. I basically been wearing this every single day. And I kind of feel that guilt of like, I have so many other highlighters, I probably should be rotating things. But I just love this one so much, especially right now because I have a little bit of a tan. It's so beautiful. It has a really gorgeous sort of goldeny, glowy champagne undertone on the skin. It's pretty punchy. Like this is not a very soft highlight. It does have a little bit more of a metallic sheen, but it's not chunky, it's not glittery. And I feel like it looks just as good as highlighters that cost like three times as much as this. So this retails for about nine, ten dollars which is very affordable. I think I found mine at Walmart for around nine dollars. So if you have trouble finding these, check Walmart because I haven't seen the highlighters in a lot of um, other drugstore displays, but I have seen it there. So I highly recommend this if you can get your hands on it. So good. So I don't usually have a lot of hair things in my favorites videos, but I do have a couple this month that have been like total game changers for me. Like I can't not tell you about them. The first one is kind of random. These are 
hair ties. Well, they start out looking like this when they're not stretched. This is one that I just had in my hair, so obviously it's a little bit stretched out right now. These are, I believe, called Invisibobble hair bands. Um, they are basically like plastic and they're stretchy. And these are the best hair ties if you don't want to leave marks in your hair. So I have very straight hair, and while my hair will not hold a curl like to save its life, if I put my hair up in a ponytail with a regular elastic band, it will leave a huge dent in my hair. Even if I like try to like braid it, twist it, whatever, put it in a bun, always leaves kinks in my hair, and then when I wear it down, it looks crazy. But now what I found is if I use these, if I put my hair up in a bun and then take it out later, my hair will just have like curl to it and have some body and movement with no like kinks or creases or lines. It's amazing. They don't hurt. They don't pull out your hair. They're really easy to use. And I just think they are the bomb. They come in three packs. Um, I honestly have no idea where I got them from. Like I had them in my collection for the longest time and I hadn't even opened the box. And one day I was like, why don't I try these? And then as soon as I did, I'm like, what have I been doing? Why did I not start using these like months ago? So I'll have to put in the description box a link to where you can buy them because I honestly have no idea. I feel like they just magically appeared in my in my stash of hair products and and they were sort of like a hidden gem waiting for me to discover. Kind of similarly, I also have been completely obsessed with the Bumble and Bumble Preta powder. And this is just a little travel size. And this is again something I got in like a Sephora set or something and had it in the cabinet of like stuff I'll get to trying eventually. It sat there, it sat there. One day I was like, maybe I should try that. Total game changer. Completely obsessed. This is like my new favorite dry shampoo because I can get it exactly in the areas that are oily because it's a powder and you sprinkle it into your hair and you can just like massage it in. So, I mean, it's very white, but as it absorbs the oil, it disappears into your hair and it actually leaves your hair looking matte and looking fresh and not greasy. And it's amazing. And a lot of times I'll pair this with the Living Proof Full Dry Volume Blast, which is a really amazing texturizing spray. This does give your hair some texture, but I really like it more for oil absorption. So what I'll do is sprinkle this into my roots or wherever my skin is oily if I'm on second day hair and then spray some dry volume blast to like really amp up the volume. And my hair actually looks really good. I feel like my roots get so greasy and so flat um, that it makes me want to wash my hair every day like for it to look good and I do use like very gentle sulfate free shampoos and conditioners so I can get away with washing my hair every day and it not getting super dried out but sometimes it's just a pain sometimes you don't want to ideal so if I am going to try to you know skip a shampoo that is the product I reach for. I've also got kind of like a re-favorite. So this is something I've had for a while, but I busted it back out for the summer and I have completely re-fallen in love with this. It's kind of a problem. This is the Sol de Janeiro um, Brazilian Bum Bum Cream. And basically, okay, first of all, this smells like pistachio caramel. It has the most incredible scent ever. Like anybody who talks about this talks about how ridiculously delicious it smells. That is completely true. Uh, and it is very pricey. I think it's around $40 for this sized tub of product. It does last a really long time. I got this in the winter and I'm still only like halfway through it and I use it a lot. So, I mean, I will say it, it's not like you're going to use it up in two seconds if you're spending the money, but it's still pricey for a body lotion. However, I never really realized that this makes your skin Sparkle because I got it in the winter and I would put it on and then be putting on long pants and long sleeve shirts And I just really liked it for the smell and how it made my skin feel it's really hydrating But now that it is summer and I'm wearing dresses and I'm wearing shorts and I put this on my legs Put this on my arms and I'm like out in the Sun the other day. I said I put it on like Instagram stories My skin was literally sparkling like Twilight vampire shining in the Sun sparkling it was really cool so uh, I kind of feel like that's made me love it even more. Like, it's not chunky glitter like you are going to middle school dance shimmery. Like, it's a really fine shimmer. It's so pretty. So, it's made me want to use this. It's made me kind of feel like it's more worth the money. I don't know if that sounds stupid, uh, but now that I know that it not only like really smells good, it makes my skin feel good, but it also makes it really look good, kind of makes me that much more excited to use it and also that much more 
sad about what will happen when it runs out because I know it's going to be a very expensive reinvestment. So if you want to splurge and treat yourself, you would I, I recommend checking this out because it's awesome, especially this time of year if you want to get the most of showing off your arms and legs, if you're wearing cute dresses, it's really, really nice. And then the last favorite that I want to share before we get into my fail, fails? We'll see. One's kind of a fail, one's sort of like a semi-fail. Um, the last thing I want to talk about are these Impress Press On One Step Gel Nails. So that's what I actually have on my nails today. They do not at all match my outfit. That's kind of neither here nor there. Um, I got these in a Walmart beauty box and I finally decided to just try them out and I was really impressed by these. First of all, they have stayed on so well. So I put these on four, five, five days ago at least. I don't think it's been a full week yet, but they haven't come off. They still feel like they're really well adhered. They're not too long or difficult to like do my daily tasks with. I don't feel like they're obnoxious. They don't interfere with anything. They're super cute. They were just really comfortable and easy to apply. It was like the most piece of cake manicure ever and they last, which I think is awesome. The only thing that has been driving me absolutely crazy, and maybe it had to do with my application technique, it was the very first time I ever tried press on nails before, so this is definitely something with a little bit of a learning curve, but the nail on the cuticle side is not completely flush, so there's like a teeny tiny little space between the nail, the, the press on, and my actual nail, and when I run my fingers through my hair, my hair will get stuck and like pull underneath the back side of the nail and like all of a sudden I'll be like have my fingers stuck in my hair and it's super annoying. So that is the one thing like I maybe it's just a press on nail thing or maybe like yeah, yeah maybe it's how I put them on. Maybe it's just me. Drove me a little nuts but I definitely would use these again. I really am curious to try some other styles. I have enough nails in here to do a whole other full set another manicure because they give you 30 nails in here so you definitely have enough if you can find ones that will fit the size of your fingers correctly to get two manicures out of one package so i think that is great now on the flip side these did not work out for me at all so this is my fail of july these are the ncla designer nail wraps i was really excited about these i saw them on hold look and they because they are like a white marble pattern and I'm obsessed with the um, in cocoa nail, um, like they're not, I don't know if they're called nail wraps, but they're like, you know, they're basically really fine polish that you stick on your fingers and you don't have to let it dry and they just adhere perfectly. Those go on so well. These on the other hand are more like they're like plasticky. They're not um, like actual polish that adheres to your nail. So what I found with these is that they didn't stick on really well. Like these are something that I don't think you even take off with nail polish remover. Like you take them off by pulling them off your nails versus the other like nail appliques, like they're actual polish. So you have to remove them with nail polish remover when you're done. So I just felt like I did all, like it took a while to like actually get these all on my nails and they just never really sat perfectly on the surfaces of my nails. They would like bubble a little bit around the edges. I tried real hard to smooth them out. They just didn't stick really well. Then they started pulling up at the corners and I felt like after a day or maybe two max, like I had to take them off because they just didn't look good anymore. So I was really disappointed in that because I thought that the design was super cool, but I definitely would not buy these again. Anything that's like nail wrap that's not like the actual nail polish applique that you have to remove with nail polish remover, I would not use them again. And then the very last product that I want to talk about, and this is sort of like kind of a fail, but I kind of still like it and I love this brand to absolute death, so it kind of like pains me to say anything bad about them, but I have some issues with this product. So this is the Pacifica Mineral Bronzing Sunscreen Coconut Probiotic. So this is an SPF 30 spray on sunscreen and it works in the sense of it's sunscreen, it applies evenly, I didn't burn when I wore this, it smells really good and I love the ingredients. The only problem is I got the bronzing version because I was really curious as to like what that would look like. I think it, I imagined it was going to give my skin more of a 
shimmery bronze glow but this is actually more matte like it it's like body makeup when you apply it the only problem is that it's not transfer resistant so if you put it on it makes your skin look amazing but then if you touch anything it rubs off on your clothes or furniture like very easily you have to be really careful so that kind of drove me crazy i feel like eventually like after a long time it really dries down and it's a little bit better about transferring but in the end it's still not perfect and it does even say on here um on the bottle i forget it says yeah can stain clothing keep away from clothes which is kind of like when are you gonna be wearing this and not even like not be wearing some kind of clothes i mean even if you're wearing like a bathing suit or like with a cover-up you don't want to necessarily get this all over your cover-up so just as something to keep in mind if you're curious to try this i think i would recommend getting the original non bronzing version i have a feeling that will be amazing if you're looking for a mineral sunscreen that has all physical spf they also have an spf 50 version in the non-tinted version so i think if i'm going to repurchase i will try that one instead i don't think i would get this bronzing one again i will try to continue to use this i just am leery now and will have to be careful about what i'm wearing because i don't want to stain clothes or furniture when i use this so those are all the products that I wanted to share with you guys today. Thank you so much for coming, hanging out, and chatting about beauty with me. I hope if you enjoyed this video, you'll give it a thumbs up. I always really appreciate your support. And if you're new to my channel, I hope you will click that little subscribe button down below. That way you'll get notified whenever I post new content. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. So I hope your week is off to an amazing start, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.